All AI applications aren't created equal. Here are three application types that people are leveraging AI for that they shouldn't be. So welcome back to the Cloud Insider channel. My name is Dave Linthick. I'm author, speaker, B-list geek, and here to tell you about the realities of cloud computing and also the utilization of generative AI in the cloud. So I thought of this topic when I saw the number of ways that people are using AI incorrectly out there. And I've been doing AI for a long time. I started in uh, in the 80s in uh, working with the Lisp programming language, which if you guys are silverbacks out there, that was kind of the first generation of AI programming, obviously limited at the time. But I saw everybody taking that technology to odd applications or odd use cases where it really wasn't the right application of that technology. And so in many cases, we were increasing the cost of building and deploying an application by three times just because we had to leverage AI technology for that. And that was for the wrong reasons. And if you think about it, that's kind of why AI declined shortly after that. People realized that it just didn't have the utility and didn't have the value that it should have had based on what people were paying for the technology. So obviously, Gen AI is exploding right now, uh, huge growth in the marketplace right now, obviously in the middle of that, having a generative AI architecture course, and please check that out uh, if you're interested in taking that course. But the use of this technology really should be leveraged for only a specific type of use case. It's not really uh, for everything out there. And it really technology is like that. In other words, we're going to find that technology, certain technology assets, certainly even cloud computing is a good fit for certain problem domains and certain use cases, but not a fit for every problem domain and every use case. And what I'm seeing right now is the explosion of generative AI is driving everybody to you know, look for problems to solve using this technology. And in many cases, we're solving the wrong problems with generative AI technology, and it's costing us too much money, and we're making critical mistakes. Let's look at what those are. So I think a lot of what's driving this is we're starting to see new executive roles that are starting to emerge, as you can see on the screen right now. And these pay very well. Uh, uh, start at uh, $200,000 and go up to almost a million dollars. And uh, the reality is companies are desperate for people who are able to leverage this technology for ways in which they believe are going to be of value to the business and more power to them. But in getting into these roles, they're taking action by looking at the wrong applications for AI technology and specifically generative AI technology. And in doing so, they're making core business mistakes that are really going to cost the business a lot more uh, in building the technology, and it's going to reduce the amount of value that's going to return back to the business. In some cases, it's going to cause negative value. So let's look at a few examples of these. So the first would be unnecessary, unnecessary automation, implementing uh, AI for tasks not specifically used to benefit from automation can be counterproductive. So in other words, we're applying AI to automate things that really shouldn't be automated with AI. And Examples of this, you know, automated simple administrative tasks that can be handled manually, but doing so by force-fitting AI on top of that. We've all seen people that are doing this right now, certainly using uh, chat GPT and other generative AI systems where they're having it write uh, thank you notes and letters and uh, business correspondence where it's probably not that difficult to do these things in a manual way. And I think people uh, actually pick up on the fact that they're leveraging AI to communicate with them. And um, not necessarily going to be the most productive thing to do. So it's essential to evaluate whether automation adds value to the, this technology before you push AI on top of it. And I think that's a question that a lot of people aren't asking right now. So, so it's not that we can do something. It's asking the question if we should do it. And I don't think those questions are being asked. So the next mistake that I'm seeing out there is invasive behavioral monitoring, and that's employing AI for overly intrusive behavioral monitoring of employees, productivity things, things like that, uh, uh, monitoring a factory floor, for example, and not understanding any clear benefit or consent that may raise ethical concerns and productivity concerns and damage relationship between the company and the employee. I've been seeing this since AI came around. People are using it as really kind of tattletales or monitoring technology to apply metrics in terms of productivity. Now, I understand a certain amount of that is probably going to be a good thing. People want to know how 
productivity productive they are and the ability to um, uh, change their behaviors to become more productive. Certainly developers, you know, play into that as well. But too much of that is a bad thing. You create bad uh, relationships with employees. And I've seen this backfire uh, in uh, many instances where the employees, you know, sue the company, uh, people are fired over it. They, they, they're, they have to uh, uh, re, uh, rehire them because of uh, bad decision or unethical ethical decisions made around using this technology. So again, this comes down to the question, we know we can do it. We know we can monitor behavior and we can provide feedback and deal with productivity metrics around uh, someone doing their job, but it should we do it? And if we were going to do it, how much should it affect the employee and how are we going to be able to do this where it's going to be to a productive benefit for everybody involved? You know, certainly the employees that are we're monitoring uh, are the processes that we're monitoring and the value that's going to come back to the business. It's an important question to ask. So next would be overly complex decision-making processes. And this is implementing AI algorithms for decision-making in situations where human judgment and intu intuition is more suitable and can lead to more complexity uh, and more cost than you need. Uh, and this obviously is something we're seeing a lot these days where people are force-fitting AI uh, in many cases to make decisions where the humans are going to be better to make the core calls in certain things. In other words, uh, looking at innovation uh, and how net new ideas should be leveraged in a certain instance. You have to remember generative AI systems and all AI systems learn from past data. So they only know what they've been taught. So they can't have new and innovative ideas. They can't have a eureka moment as we can as humans. And people need to understand that as they apply them uh, in certain business processes. So in many instances, humans are going to be better at doing this than AI systems, and we should let them do it. So humans have to be a core part of this process. And by really trying to automate everything, we're overly making these decision-making processes overly complex. So it's critical to assess whether AI-driven decision support adds genuine value or introduces an, an unnecessary layer of complexity. And that's kind of a core question I think we all need to ask right now. So that's all I'm going to have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, uh, check out my blog, check out my courses out on LinkedIn Learning, and please check out my new generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, also, uh, check out my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, and learn something new about generative AI and cloud computing this week. And I'll talk to you next week.